Hi everyone, my name is Brandon Tilly. I'm an expert in Xero um, and all things payroll. Today I'm going to go through the recent updates Xero has made to their payroll and how it will enable all users to process the recent JobKeeper payments. So on Friday the 17th of April, Xero provided an update to their payroll systems. Um, in this update, they included a JobKeeper payments checklist. Um, they've done a great job in updating their system so quickly and providing the users with so much information. Um, they're one of the only accounting platforms that have been able to update their systems for JobKeeper so quickly. So I think we're quite lucky to be all using Xero. So today I will go through um, the JobKeeper payments checklist. So it will run through how to register your interest with the ATO for JobKeeper, how to set up single touch payroll if you're not already compliant, how to enrol your employees for JobKeeper payments, um, and lastly, how to update the JobKeeper pay items to report correctly to the ATO. Once we go through that list, I will then prepare an unscheduled pay run. What this will do is it will allow us to ensure we cover off all prior um, wages post March 30 and convert them to the new payroll items. And then lastly, we'll process an ordinary pay run uh, with JobKeeper pay items so that going forward, you'll have no issues in doing this. Before we jump into zero, I just wanted to touch on a couple of things. Firstly, the superannuation guarantee. I um, quite like this example here. I think it explains the situations when you won't be paying super on the JobKeeper pay item. So in short, we pay super to an employee if they've physically worked the hours for us. Um, so a good example might be across a fortnight, we've got an employee that's only been able to work 40 hours because we just don't have the work there under the current climate, um, and their pay rate is $25 an hour. This means they're owed $1,000 worth of wages in short. Obviously, that's $500 short of the $1,500 payment they get under the JobKeeper. So we're going to pay GST on $1,000 of that. Uh, we're going to pay superannuation on $1,000 of that, sorry. Um, and then on the other 500, there's going to be no superannuation payable. Because I haven't worked the time for us, it's not really fair for the employer to be out of pocket the point, the 9.5 percent on that $500. So we're only paying super on the time they've worked for us. I will touch on it a bit later when we go through zero and do the payroll. I'll just take note, get you to take note of when we're paying super to them and when we're not. Um, Finally, this little table here is quite good. So it's important to note you don't have to change your pay schedule to keep up with this um, JobKeeper fortnight. But what it is good to know is um, if you've got new employees that come on or an employee leaves, if they're employed during this JobKeeper fortnight, they're entitled to that full $1,500 payment. Um, so it might be good to have this little slide saved somewhere just so you can refer back to it if an employer leaves you during the period. Um, let's take an example. Let's say an employer leaves on the 27th of May. They've worked two days into the fortnight, 25 May to 7 June. That's fortnight number five on the table. Therefore, they're entitled to the $1,500 payment for that fortnight. What we'll do now is just jump across into zero and I'm going to take you through going to take you through um, the steps that we discussed earlier. So if I come here um, and go into pay employees, this is where you will find your JobKeeper checklist. So you'll note across here, normally you've got your pay runs banner. That's nothing new there. What we're looking at here is this payroll support during COVID-19. So we want to click on this link here. This link takes us to those steps I discussed earlier. This is their checklist. So firstly, there is the register your interest with the ATO, which I'll just right click and open in a new tab. tab. So this takes you to a page um, just with the JobKeeper payments. It runs you through the information there. Um, it tells you all about the information, got links to everything you need, um, and you can follow that for registering with the ATO. The ATO is working with Xero um, and once the ATO portal with the JobKeeper registration is up to date, it, Xero has notified us that it will actually flow in here and you'll have a little tick like you're set up with single touch payroll, it'll have you're registered with 
um, the ATO for JobKeeper payments. Again, set up for single touch payroll. Look, if you haven't set up for single touch payroll by now, please reach out to our office um, after this video and I'll probably likely reach out to you and help you set up for single touch payroll. Um, the next one is enroll employees for JobKeeper payments. So again, we're gonna click on this and open it up. This is quite a good feature they've added. Um, so what it does is it actually compares the employment type of each employee and when they started and runs it through the ATO's guidelines and it tells you whether per those guidelines they're gonna be potentially eligible. So you can see, just jump back in there. You can see here, um, we've got six employees that are potentially eligible. Again, then across the top, it says not all information to determine eligibility is available in zero. Gives you another link to go to. Um, definitely important that you take the time to read these links. Make sure your employees are ticking the boxes that they need to tick, um, just to be compliant. Um, then the next one is they've got instructions on paying staff JobKeeper payments, which is what I will go through shortly. But again, another good link if you need to touch back, check how you're doing it. Maybe you just need to confirm you're doing something right. So there's another good link there for that. Um, skip down here. And then it says here, if you've select, selected incorrect JobKeeper dates for any employee, don't file with single touch payroll. That's really important. As soon as we file with single touch payroll, that information's fed straight to the ATO, and then they will put that across into their JobKeeper system. So it's important to take your time with this, double check. Um, and if you do make a mistake, try and pick it up before. Um, if you do file, you can contact Zero or contact us and there are some workarounds, but they just take significant time. So firstly, we're just gonna start JobKeeper for James LeBron. So what this does brings up a screen, asks us what fortnight we're starting the job seeker. Um, we're gonna start it with fortnight one, 30 March to 12 April, and we're gonna save for reporting. Gives you a warning there, once saved, this can't be undone. So this is another good time to check and make sure you're happy with it. We're gonna do Oliver Gray as well. Save for reporting. And we're gonna do Sally Martin. Same date, save for reporting. Now the reason I've done those three um, is because I know these three are on the fortnightly pay run and I'm gonna use a fortnightly pay run as an example. Um, we're in the demo, demo account, so we try and keep um, some things separate, so that's why I've done that. I will go back to the checklist now, which you can just click across here. Um, and the next one is update your JobKeeper pay items to report correctly with the ATO. I will take you through that now, but again, if you wanna check back and make sure you're doing it right, there is another link here, which will take you to a set of instructions. So the pay items, zero, again, as I said earlier, have been really good with the way they've done it. Um, and they've already input the pay items for us. So I'm just gonna run you through what they look like and then we can get into doing the unscheduled payroll. So I've gone to settings. I'm gonna to cross to payroll settings now. And then we're gonna go pay items. As I said, they've already put this um, pay item in. So in earnings, you can see this JobKeeper payment top up. So they've put this through. This item will be used um, to top up an employee's page, that $1,500, if they haven't reached that earning. And for that reason, it's exempt from superannuation, but it's reportable as W1. We'll go through this exempt from superannuation in a bit and I'll explain it. Um, so at this stage, we don't actually need to do anything. Zero, I've done all the work for us, which is terrific. I'm gonna come in and we'll do the unscheduled pay run now. So this pay run here, um, was for the fortnight ending 14th of April, 2020. So this is the first pay of the JobKeeper fortnight, but we've already processed it because we had to pay our employees and there was no information out from the government yet. I'm sure a lot of you watching this will be in the same situation. Whether you have payroll weekly or fortnightly, you've probably already lodged a pay run. Um, and so you need to re revert that pay run. So let's just jump into James LeBron. I'll use him as the first example. So James, 
worked 76 hours at his hourly rate, and he only earned $1,495.89. A little bit annoying, but under the JobKeeper, he is entitled to earn $1,500 regardless. So we need to top up his pay to get him to that $1,500. What we're going to do is I'll open in a new link. Um, we're going to add a pay run. So we're going to click the drop down and we want to click unscheduled pay run. Select the payroll calendar. We, we know it was the fortnightly calendar. You can always check, jump back in. It's got it across there. It's in the current financial year. And then we just want to make sure we select the correct fortnight, which was the fortnight ending 14 April 2020. We'll get here and we're just going to tick some of these in. So we'll start with James LeBron. We're going to add an earnings rate and we're going to select the JobKeeper payment top up. What we can do, the ordinary hours have already been paid. We'll keep it there for the moment and we're going to put in here $4.11. That takes him up to the $1,500. We're going to get rid of that one now because we know we've got to the $1,500. We're going to get rid of the union fees and subscriptions. He's already had those deducted out of the pay run and again, the same with this. Now you'll notice super is not calculated um, on this. That's because it's exempt from super. James LeBron didn't earn the full $1,500 with us. He was $4.11 short on the hours he actually worked. So we don't have to pay super on that. Whilst on this example, it's a small amount. Um, if your employee is not working at all, obviously you don't want to be paying 9.5% of $1,500 for each employee that's not working at all during the fortnight you're paying. So I think I think that's a really good feature. It automatically calculates. We'll save, save and go to the next on this one. This is going to bring Oliver Gray. So we'll just go back in the pay run already processed and we'll review Oliver's pay slip there. So Oliver works 76 hours at $18 an hour. I just want to check that the, again, figures here match, 76 at $18 an hour. Again, this is not quite the $1,500, so we're going to add the JobKeeper payment top up. So he needs $132 to get to his $1,500. So again, it's a good check to keep ordinary hours in there. His $1,500 is there. So we can get rid of ordinary hours. We can get rid of the lease payments. Again, as I mentioned before, no super on this amount, which is terrific. That's how it should be. And we're going to save and go next. If we come back to the pay run we've lodged, Sally earns 2280. So it's more than the $1,500. So we don't actually have to do anything for her in this pay run. She's been paid the $1,500 JobKeeper plus the extra for the hours she's worked. So we can get rid of her out of this unscheduled pay run. As a result of this pay run, there is a net pay payable of $100.11 and $36 in taxes. Um, so we're happy with that. We're going to post that pay run. Just going to close that one. By posting this pay run, if we come back here, if we were to click into both these pay runs um, and tally up what the employees have been paid across the two, all employees would have been paid at a minimum the $1,500 JobKeeper payments they're entitled to. It gets a little bit more hands-on if you've got a lot of employees that you've got to do that unscheduled pay run for. Um, and if you were doing the pay run for, let's say you're doing it for two weekly two weekly pays, if you pay weekly and you've got to do an unscheduled pay run to back pay the two weekly pays, you just put one unscheduled pay run through um, and put the amounts in there to bring their totals up for that fortnight to the $1,500 where they're not already there. Again, look, some of these things you might just want to reach out to us. Um, and if it's a quick response, we're more than happy to have a quick look, point you in the right direction and help you out. What we're going to go through now is just adding an ordinary pay run, which is going to be pretty common over the next six months. So we want to, we want to make it as efficient as possible. So this is a fortnightly pay run for the 28th of April. Um, 
our workflow, let's say, for example, our workflow's really dropped off um, this fortnight. James LeBron has only been utilised 30 hours. That's all he's worked across the fortnight. We can only find 15 hours of work for him a week. So his total wage comes in at 5948 We need to use this JobKeeper payment top up to get that 590 and 48 up to the 1500 So we want to put through eight... That wasn't quite right there. Yeah, okay. So we'll pay him the 909 and 52, and that brings his pay for the fortnight up to $1,500 as it should. I think that's a good example there of how, depending on what the employee works in that fortnight, we can play around with the ordinary hours. And then all we need to do is add this one and this one together to get the $1,500. Um, Again, on this example, this JobKeeper payment top up is not with superannuation. So including here the hours he's actually worked, the hours he's owed the super, the super on, and then put all the top up into here to get him up to the $1,500. All the deductions are going to stay the same unless you've communicated with the employee or they've communicated with you and they want to cancel them. Um, so we're going to save that one and move on to the next one. Oliver Gray, he works in a different part of the business to James LeBron, and he has been utilised the full 76 hours. So we're just going to add this JobKeeper payment in for the $132 he's owed to get it up to the $1,500. Again, the soup is not calculated on that $132. Scroll down, we'll have a bit of a look. It looks good. I'm not sure why in this file it's calculating the super at 9%. Um, it should obviously be 9.5%. Take some solace in the fact that it's just a demo account and um, we're not actually ripping anyone off super. But important, you might just want to check yours, make sure they're 9.5%. It doesn't hurt to check these things every now and then. It shouldn't change, but you don't want to be caught out if it does. Sally Martin. Again, she's been utilised for full 76 hours. We don't have to do anything here. She's been paid $1,500 plus the extra for the hours she's worked. Let's say Sally only worked the 30 hours. Then we'd have to add the job keeper in and that's going to be $600. And I'll just check, change this 9 to 9.5. But that's as simple as that. So at this stage, for an ordinary pay run, it's not too much of a difference. We are just going in and where the employee doesn't earn the $1,500 through the hours they've worked, we want to include a JobKeeper top up. A handy little um, feature they've added for businesses, and it's particularly helpful if you have a lot of employees. Some employees might not want the JobKeeper for various reasons, um, so you might have a mix of employees with JobKeeper and without. So just to keep track of who has JobKeeper, who hasn't, Zero have added in this little line. So every time you go into a pay slip whilst you're preparing a pay run, it'll say JobKeeper enrolled and the start date for that individual. Now, if they're not enrolled, it won't, it won't say that there. So, I mean, if you've got 25 casuals, some casuals have it, some casuals don't, it's a really good way of being able to Jump in the pay run. You don't have to look elsewhere each time. It's automatically going to be there in front of you and you can come in and say, yep, James is JobKeeper enrolled. He's got to be paid $1,500 regardless of the hours he works. The next one might be John. John opted not to be JobKeeper enrolled. He only worked 10 hours at $25, so he only gets paid the $250. We don't have to top his up. So it's just a good little feature that you can have there checking. I think that should cover it um as i've said we are here to help so if you've got any really quick queries we're happy to help um point me in the right direction of answers provide some more videos that sort of thing um, and we've obviously got our job keeper assistance packages which you can get in touch with us um by a website or a phone call and we can talk you through our review process and how we can help you that on that front thanks for watching